Hi, my name is Bob, and I approve this message. I got the magic in me. Every time I touch that track, it turns into gold. Everybody knows. Welcome I've got back. Today, we're going to be talking about transformations. We're going to be talking about three different types of transformations translating, reflection, and dilation. Before we begin with that, though, we need some vocabulary. So here's a summary of our vocabulary. The figure before the transformation is called a pre-image. The pre-image is labeled with letters. So for example, triangle ABC. After the transformation, we use the word prime to describe the image. The image is labeled with letters and primes. So for example, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. The prime looks like an apostrophe symbol, but it's just straight up and down as opposed to uh, being at a slant. Notice each letter gets a prime, so for example, A prime. Now let's take a look at example A. So here in example A, it says the pre-image of triangle ABC is shown on the coordinate plane. Draw a translation of right three units and down four units and label the image A prime, B prime, C prime. And then it wants us to write our coordinates in the box. So in order to perform a translation or a slide, all we need to do is count from where our point is on the graph in order to move that point. So for example, if we're going to move A three to the right, we're gonna count one, two, three to the right, and then we need to count four down. So one, two, three, four. And surprisingly, A prime is gonna be right where C is located. So then we're gonna write, we're gonna do the same thing with B prime. So we're gonna go over to B, and we're gonna count over three to the right, one, two, three, and then we're gonna count down four, one, two, three, Four, and we're going to put a point there and we're going to call that B prime. Then the last one we're going to do is C. Remember that's where we left off at A prime. So we're going to count over three. One, two, three to the right and down four, down one, two, three, four. And then we're going to put our point here and label it C prime. Connect all of our dots to make our triangle. And notice that our triangle is congruent. It looks exactly the same, the same shape, same size as the triangle that we started with. So when we're doing translations, the two triangles are going to be congruent. They're going to be the same shape, same size. Now we need to copy down our points, and we can either look at that on our graph, or we could have added three to the right and then subtracted four from the y. We'll do that here in a moment. So we've got a prime is going to be at zero and then up two. So our new point is at zero, two. We have to do b prime. That's at negative four, negative two. And our last point is at 3, negative 2, so we'll write that down. And then we have all of our points calculated in our triangle, our new triangle, A prime, B prime, C prime. Now let's take a look at example B. So here we are at example B, and this time it wants us to perform a translation. So again, a slide, so we're going to be moving it from side to side. The points from pre-image of D, E, F are listed. Draw a translation of X minus 3 y plus 5 and label the image d prime e prime f prime so we have a small problem here unlike the last time where we had a picture where we could just count the dots on our graph this time we don't have a picture we just are given the points so it tells us that we want to do a translation of x minus 3 and y plus 5 so for each one of our points we're going to do each thing that it asks us to do. So for the example, in D there, it says that X is minus three, so we're gonna subtract three from the two to get our new point. So two minus three is gonna be negative one. And then for the Y coordinate, it tells us it wants to add five to every single one of those. So negative two plus five is going to be at three. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing for E. So for E, again, we're gonna subtract three from our x coordinate, because that's what it tells us to do, and we're gonna get negative five. And then we're going to add five to our y coordinate, because that's what it tells us to do, and we're gonna get negative one. All right, for the last point, again, we're gonna subtract three, so five minus three is gonna give us two, and we're going to add five to our y coordinate, so negative six plus five is going to be negative one. So now that we have all of our points, we can plot them on our graph and then label them accordingly. So for d prime, that's gonna be at negative one, positive three, label that D prime. Then we've got negative five, negative one, that's gonna be E prime. And then we have positive two, negative one, so that's going to be F prime. And you can see that they made a triangle. We'll connect our triangle using our lines here, and we're ready to go on to example C. 
So here in example C, we're going to be doing a reflection or a flip over an axis. So in this case, the pre-image of GHJ is shown on the coordinate plane. Draw a reflection over the Y axis, so that's the one that we're working on here, and label the image G prime, H prime, J prime. So the first thing that we need to do is identify which axis we will be flipping over. In this case, it says the Y axis, so I'm going to draw a little dotted line down my Y axis because that's the one I'm flipping over. Just to remind myself, you don't have to do that, but it helps me uh, know which one we're going to go over. So when we flip, we're just going to go to the opposite side of the axis. So in this case, we've got G is at 6, positive 6. We're going to just go to the other side. So in this case, it's over 6 spaces. So we're going to go over the other direction, six spaces, the opposite. So over one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's going to be at negative six and label our point G prime. Now we're going to do the same thing with H. So H is over one, two spaces. So we're going to go the other direction, one, two spaces and label that H prime. And then our last place, J is over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spaces. So we're going to do the same thing counting from the axis. So we're going to go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spaces and label our new point J prime. All right. Now that we have those all on there, we'll connect our dots to make our triangle fabulous. And you can see again that our triangle is exactly the same shape and exactly the same size, so that any time that we're doing a reflection, those triangles are going to be congruent. They're going to be the same shape, same size. So now that we have those down, we're going to write down our new points. So G prime happens to be at positive, or sorry, negative 6, positive 6. Our H prime is at negative 2, positive 2. And J prime is at negative 9, positive 2. Now notice that when we did a reflection over the y-axis, the point that actually changed, the thing that changed in our points there, is the x-coordinate. So notice that the y-coordinate stayed the same every time. It was 6, it was 6, it was 2, it was 2, it was 2, it was 2. But our y coordinate, our x-coordinate changed every time to the opposite of what it was. So if it was positive 6, it became negative 6. If it was positive 2, it became negative 2. If it was positive 9, it became negative 9. So the opposite coordinate changed based on which axis we flipped over. So we flipped over the y-axis, so our x-coordinate changed. I wonder if that's the opposite when we flip over the x-axis. Let's find out in example D. So here we are in example D, and it says, again, we're going to be doing a flip, except this time we're going to be going over the x-axis, and we're going to be looking for the pre-image of KLM and find the new image K prime, L prime, M prime. So in this case, they've only given us the points, told us which axis to flip over, but we have no picture that we can just count off of. So we need to remember the rule that we discovered last time. We notice whatever axis we were flipping over, the opposite point became the opposite. So in this case, I've got 6, 6. So I'm going to be changing my x coordinate. Since I'm flipping over my x axis, I'm going to be changing my y coordinate. So positive 6, negative 6. Notice that the 6 became the opposite. If I've got positive 2 for the next one, then the opposite of that is going to be negative 2 for my y coordinate. And if I've got positive 9 here, then the opposite is going to be negative 2 for my y coordinate. So notice since we were flipping over the x axis, the point that changed was my y coordinate every time it was the opposite. Now, if those points had been negative points, the opposite of them would be positive points. In this case, all of our points were positive, so they became negative. So now we're going to go ahead and graph our points on our graph. So we've got positive 6, negative 6. Put our point right here, and that's going to be K prime. Don't forget the prime marker. Then we've got the next one. Is it positive 2, negative 2? So again, we're going to label that with the L prime marker. And then positive 9, negative 2, and we're going to label that with the M prime marker. Now that we've got our triangle, we'll go ahead and connect all our dots. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And now let's move on to the next example. So here we are at example E, and it's talking about dilation or scale. So it says the pre-image of NPQ is shown on the coordinate plane. Dilate by a scale factor of 3 and label that image N prime, P prime, Q prime. So whenever we're talking about dilation or scale, the thing that we're going to be talking about is talking about multiplying. Okay, so we're going to be multiplying by whatever scale factor we're given. In this case, we've been given a scale factor of 3. So we're going to take each one of our points and multiply them by 3. So 0 times 3 is going to be 0. 3 times 3 is going to be 9. Negative 2 times 3 is going to be negative 6. 1 times 3 is going to be 3. 2 times 3 is going to be 6. 
1 times 3 is going to be 3. So now that we have all of our points, we can label them on our graph or plot them on our graph and label them, same thing. And so we're going to go with 0 and 9. That's going to be our n prime. We're going to go to negative 6, positive 3, and that's going to be our p prime. And we're going to go from positive 6, neg positive 3, so over 6, up 3. And that's going to be our q prime. We're going to connect all our dots to make our triangle. And you can notice that this time our triangle is not congruent. It's not exactly the same. It is similar, as in they are the same shape. However, they are not the same size. So dilation, they're the same shape, but not the same size. Translating, they're the same shape and the same size. And reflection, they're the same shape and the same size. Now let's take a look at the final example. Here we are at example F, and this time we're going to be doing a dilation. So again, we're going to be multiplying. It says this time the points of the pre-image R, S, T are listed and dilate by a scale factor of one half and label the image R prime, S prime, T prime. So again, if we're multiplying by our scale factor, we're going to be multiplying by whatever number they gave us. But when you multiply by a fraction or a decimal, it actually makes your triangle smaller. So if your scale factor is greater than one, your triangle is going to get larger or your shape, whatever shape you're doing, is going to be larger than one. If you're going to have a scale factor that's a fraction or a decimal, then your, your scale factor, or your, sorry, your shape is going to get smaller. So in this case, we're going to do 12 times one half. 12 times one half is going to be six. Same thing for the other side, 6, 12, and 12. 4 times a half is 2. 4 times a half is 2. 16 times a half is going to be 8. And 6 times a half is going to be 3. So now that we have all of our points, we're going to plot them on our graph. So we're going to put a point at 6, 6, and we're going to label that R prime. We've got a point at S prime is at 2, 2. So we're going to go up 2, over 2, and we're going to label that S prime. And we've got a point at 8, 3. So we'll go up 8 and over 3, and we'll label that T prime. And this triangle will be significantly smaller than the triangle that we were talking about before. It'll actually be half the size of the triangle that we were looking at before. So again, the scale factors change the triangle or the shape by whatever the scale factor is. So if you have a scale factor of three, then you're gonna make a shape that's three times the size. In this case, you had a scale factor of a half, so you're gonna make a shape half of the size. That brings us to the end of this set of notes and this end of this video. If you like this video, go ahead and throw us a thumbs up. If you love this video, go ahead and throw us a sub, and we will catch you in the next one. Magic in me.